There are many instances, if it be Occupy Wall Street, Democracy Spring, or any of the other many protests which the progressive members of society rally together in order to send a message to the government that they're not doing their job. These progressives are against war in the Middle East and corporate welfare, but when they protest against these, nothing gets changed. We've been fighting in Afghanistan for almost 15 years, Iraq for another 13 years, and the situation has gotten far worse with Islamic extremist groups rising out of the wreckage and rallying support against Western imperialism. When liberals are angry at what their government is doing, they will take to the streets and protest the actions of their government. When they do this, either nothing is changed, or if there's even the slightest threat of change to the status quo, the state deploys the police force to break up the protests. Many protesters flee at the sight of authority, but some stand their ground. The more courageous protesters are then flung to the ground and detained for their outcry against the system, which has led them to come out in the first place. So protesters getting flung to the ground is one thing, but how can these protesters protect themselves from getting arrested and detained? Here's a liberal living in the US which has ideas on how to prevent these actions and make the authorities compromise with the public. So, hello liberal, tell us what you want to do. Hello there. I have heard about the, um, about the protests in Baton Rouge. Fuck, my hair is still... Fucking Calyx. Okay. Okay, Calyx out of the way. Out of. So, my fellow liberals in Baton Rouge have been protesting after the death of Alton Sterling. Now... I mean, now, I am a great many things. I am an LGBT activist. I am a feminist. I am a Black Lives Matter supporter. And also, like many of you, um, maybe not everyone in Baton, in Baton Rouge, I know about the demographics of people who were voting for Hillary. But like many of my fellow liberals, I am definitely pissed off about the whole election. The election was rigged. I was supporting Bernie Sanders, and I would still support him if he continued running, but I don't think he has a chance to actually win, unfortunately, because like I said, it's rigged. But. In Baton Rouge, where people are getting, I've heard that apparently there's some cases of police brutality going on during these protests. Now, I know a lot of people will um, tend to think of this, um, tend to think of self-defense as violence, but it's not violence, it's just that, it's self-defense. If you improvise a riot shield out of a trash can so that you can't get beaten down by a baton, is that violent? No, it's defense. And that's what I advocate for, is I'm not advocating for throwing Molotov cocktails at police officers or for shooting at police officers because police officers haven't shot into the crowds and killed anybody yet. But tactics to keep yourself from getting arrested? I don't see any issue with that. Impro like I said, improvise a riot shield so that you can't get hit with um, nightsticks. Work together to try and make sure that protests or protesters who they're trying to arrest, um, you can all jump on a police officer, pull them off, and pull the protester the other way. Especially if you outnumber the police officers. And again, this is not violence in any way. You are simply defending yourself. There is no way to continue your protest in jail. There's no way to get your demands met if you get put in prison. If you get put in jail and you get processed which happens a lot in street activism. I myself have been involved in protests where I actually taught people 
how to improvise riot shields just in case the police came along and decided to basically break up the protest. These are all perfectly ethical tactics because these do not involve harming anyone. They simply involve keeping yourself from being knocked away by the police. So, again, I'm also... Something else I don't condone, throwing rocks at police officers. Because, again, police officers have not used lethal force yet. When they start using lethal force, it's a different story, but for now... I am going to say self-defense is perfectly fine. There is no issue in preventing yourself from being arrested. The goal of protest is to get some concessions from the state, to get concessions from the government. And if that's what you're going for, you should do your damnedest keep yourself from getting arrested. Now, you can shrug me off because I am a cis white bisexual male, and because maybe I don't know the plight to the extent that it's not personal for me, but I can say that I am sympathetic towards the Black Lives Matter movement. I am sympathetic towards the protests in Baton Rouge, and I want to see them successful. And I think the best way to make sure they're successful is to make sure that you're not hauled away in zip ties. I will see you later. Out. Those are some great suggestions. The problem with most protests is the protesters don't prepare for state repression if many people join in with the protest. They'll just march down the roads holding their signs, and when they get tackled by the police, that's game over for them. The thing is, it doesn't have to be game over. It's perfectly acceptable to prevent your arrest in these situations. If protesters work together and help their fallen brothers and sisters escape persecution, then they will find their movements become much stronger than they'd otherwise be. There are many resources available to protesters. One, which our liberal friend mentioned, is improvising riot shields to prevent against the strikes of a battle, or block access to vulnerable protesters whom the police may target. A strong sense of solidarity comes when protesters use de-arresting strategies to prevent the arrest of other protesters. This could either involve pulling the protester away from the police into the crowds, or pushing the police officers off the other protesters and removing that protester from the front line to the masses. There are other strategies of defence which our liberal friend forgot to mention. Gas masks can be used to prevent the influence of pepper spray on protesters. Objects such as tennis rackets can knock smoke, grenades and other utilities back towards the attacking officers, and this can buy protesters some valuable time. So, if you come across some protesters, tell them about these strategies to defend themselves. If they say that this is advocating violence against the police, Tell them that it's as simple as self-defense. Tell them that you have a right to defend yourself and the police shouldn't have special rights to assault you. It's a long process, but if the protesters stick to these principles, they will find themselves gaining the upper hand against the aggressors, having concessions granted to them. We didn't get the 8 hour workday from letting cops tackle us to the ground. We got it through defending ourselves and the threat of revolution. If the general public proved they're a force to be reckoned with, rather than a disorganised bunch of people with signs, we can get the workers the rights they deserve. <laughs>